Well, thank you all very much for joining us. Um, I am glad to offer the introductions for our Q&A. We will briefly have the director come in via Zoom, um, and I will offer the introductions for both our uh, filmmaker and our interlocutor this evening. Um, so Fayel Boulifa, the director of the film that we just watched, is a British filmmaker of Moroccan descent. His first feature film, Lucy and Lynn, released in 2020, won a collection of prizes at several international festivals. Faisal was also nominated for the Critics Circle Film Award in 2021 for his directorial work on the feature. Faisal is a writer and director of several short films, including Burn My Body Whore, winner of the Best UK Short at London East Elm Film Festival, and the Grand Prix de Jury at On. Uh, Andres Prime, Prime, Premier's Plans, pardon me, in 2020, and the BAFTA-nominated The Curse, winner of the Illy Prize at the Cannes Film Festival 2012. His latest short film, Rate Me, was the winner of the Cannes uh, Illy Prize in 2015. Belifa was also named one of screen stars of Tomorrow. Um, and I'm pleased to introduce our moderator, Mohamed Amir Maziani, who is a philosopher and performer and holds a PhD in philosophy from Paris 1 Pantheon Sorbonne University. He is an assistant professor at Brown University, and his first book, Dans un père sous la terre, published in 2021 by La Découverte, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that, deploys an eco racial history of secularization, inventing the concept of the secular scene to describe aspects of the premier, present prim, climate crisis. He argues that Orientalism and climate change can be seen as two facets of the secularization of empires during the 19th century. So if we could all welcome Professor Mezian. Um, I would also just like to say, as we are bringing the filmmaker in via Zoom, I believe that is slowly coming up. Um, because uh, Belifa won't be able to hear anybody but Professor Mazian, we're not gonna mic people, so if you could just project your question, because Professor Mazian is going to have to repeat it anyway, and as succinct as possible would be great. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, Good Faisal. Evening. Hello. Good evening. Do you hear? Yes, people can hear you. Okay, excellent. You can hear me. Perfectly. Okay, yes. Good to know that you're uh, doing well. But do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very well. Great, great, great. So um, yeah, let me let me begin. First of all, thank you for this um, uh, fascinating movie. Uh, uh, you know, destabilizing movie in 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 many ways. I wanted to start by uh, by um, quoting you. Um, mm if you allow. Mm? And you, you gave a, a, an, an interview in, to, to the, the Guardian, and mm. you, said, um, you said this, so I quote from you, films that mm. do well at festivals often put in opposition traditionalism and freedom. Mm. Characters are shackled by the traditionalism of their own country and liberate themselves by embracing a Western style of individualism. Mm -hmm. The more art house the films are, the more it happens. I didn't want a very simple opposition between traditionalism, which usually means religion, and mm -hmm. liberty, end of quote. So here's my, my questions, let's say. Mm -hmm. So the first one is, how does this film that we just saw destabilize this simple opposition between mm -hmm. traditionalism uh, uh, mm -hmm. and liberty, is it precisely by problematizing what we mean by liberty? Um, mm -hmm. And is it partly, at least, it's, you know, it's, um, it's only one of the ways in which we could, we could try and make sense of what you're saying, but um, is it partly because precisely at the very end of the movie, the mother, so Fatima Zahra, mm -hmm. um, finds a form of, of liberation uh, mm -hmm. uh, in what we call "quote unquote" religion, precisely at the end mm -hmm. of the of, of the movie, and you know this probably also means that there is something about this kind of of um, of um, a freedom that completely, precisely uh, uh, unsettles this divide between tradition and, and traditionalism and freedom, as you say, mm -hmm. which precisely mm -hmm. is something that seems to be refused by by Salim, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the last question, of course. 
you know, these are all connected, mm -hmm. um, is also how does your criticism of this opposition, because of course it's not just a purely theoretical uh, criticism, so precisely what kind of possibilities does it open up aesthetically for you and how does it translate in the filmic material, if I may put it that way? Yes. Um, I'm going to start with the, the sort of um, the end of your question, maybe. It makes more, slightly more sense to me in the sense that um, when I was conceiving of the film, um, I was very aware of this, of this problem. I mean, for me, it's a problem or, or that's how, you know, I experienced a lot of, a lot of films that are coming from this part of the world. Um, and I mean, as you know, I grew up in England as well. So there was this kind of added complication of me sort of going back to Morocco, if you will, to make a film about people who were, who had grown up in Morocco and lived in Morocco, which is obviously a different, a different thing. And, um, I think it really started with the form. It, it took me, it took me a while to know what story that I could tell or what story I felt I could tell in Morocco. And I think, um, if I ended up with this one, one of the reasons was that, um, I felt this kind of so the, the 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 this opposition there's a kind of practical reason for it in a way a technical reason for it in the way in this in being that drama is kind of born of conflict so of course most many films will kind of often look for the the to have a cl very clear understandable conflict and often a central single central conflict. And I think that's one of the reasons why so many films, especially those that do well in film festivals, end up with this kind of very, very simplistic um, opposition between, um, yeah, tradition and uh, liberty or in a Western sense idea of individuality. Um, and of course, that's, I mean, and the other reason is I think often they're very, they're very much designed to flatter their audiences on some level as well. Not all of them, of course, but I'm, I'm speaking generally, but it's very often the case. So in the sense that they kind of, the people who are watching them in art house cinemas in London or Paris will kind of be moved or the idea is that they will be moved by um, you know, a young girl who, you know, is rebelling against her family and, you know, um, is living in these kind of constraints and she's sort of discovering herself in this sense of self-discovery and self-actualization. And I suppose my, my, one of the questions I began with was how, how could I try and avoid that on some level? Um, and I think it was kind of, it, yeah, the, the 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 answer for me was the the form of the film, which is quite. I, it's not exactly a strange form, but it's quite an unfashionable one in the sense that it's kind of quite it's quite novelistic, and or that's how I was conceived of it. That's how I wanted it to be, and whether it really is like that is another question. But it's kind of and so it was almost like I was thinking of these sort of nineteenth century novels, which, of course, were very often serialized. So they are, have this kind of. Um, let's say, uh, um, episodic kind of structure. Um, and all that to say is that I was kind of, I, 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 when I began to write, I, I was, um, I told myself, I'm going to follow these two characters and I'm going to try and be truthful to them as I understand them. Um, and maybe this kind of novelistic structure, which would be slightly more episodic, would be a way to avoid creating that central con con conflict which is often you know and then beyond that it was also tr just trying not to write something that I don't believe which is that you know what will save these two characters obviously live in sort of very precarious and difficult circumstances would be a kind of sort of western sense or the sense of like self-actualization and or um sort of liberating themselves I suppose you could in, in one sense there, there is definitely the question of like maybe they need to be liberated from one another but not necessarily that 
you know the 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 this idea that the, you know that the, they live in this sort of they live this violent existence, but often I think the one of the problems with this idea of Western individuality, or, or as I see it, is that it's it's kind of very psychological. So it's almost like you kind of you need to make an interior change, and then you can you can kind of um, thrive suddenly. And um, I don't think that's how the world works. And I think the one of the problems. Uh, again with this idea is that it kind of ignores material conditions so um yeah i i i i knew that through the sort of a mother and a son there could be like an emotional core to the film um but i tried to avoid um creating such an of you know the creating the, the the mode of the film being this kind of um opposition which would then be sort of resolved by you know the characters like sort of achieving this goal of sort of self auto liberation or not um, um but it, i mean it's kind of it wasn't it was kind of complicated because of course there is stuff to do with religion and in the film and um so fatima zahra she 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 does find religion in the end and that was really like i mean i was kind of aware that it was maybe subverting slight expectations of this kind of art house film, especially as they're consumed in, in the West. But um, it was very simply, to me, what a working class Moroccan woman would do, what it was credible for, to me for her to do in that situation. And it's something that I've seen actually in my own mother, uh, who's sort of a big inspiration for film on different levels. Um, and other other women in my family and other women in Morocco that um, it's um, it's often it's kind of it's part of the world that they live in and it's often something latent within them and you know there's it's not necessarily because she worked as a prostitute or because you know she had a certain lifestyle that that no longer exists. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um... Since you um, you um, you mentioned class, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you, you know, in some of your interventions, you you say something quite um, maybe you could say surprising, which mm -hmm. is precisely about class, right? About the fact that it has become, so to speak, you know, uh, old-fashioned to 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 borrow one of your words. To talk mm -hmm. about uh, about class, also because of what you sometimes call post-colonialism or a certain kind of emphasis mm -hmm. on race or gender or or or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever that is. Um, um, so of course, you know, at first sight, we could say, well, you know, very uh, reactionary uh, uh, Marxists say that, and so on and so forth. But I mm -hmm. wanted to do justice to to what you were trying to say, and this is the, mm -hmm. the, the meaning of my question: um, mm -hmm. Are you suggesting? Uh, and this is an open-ended question. I'm not trying to say this is what you think, um, but are you trying to suggest that um, uh, uh, precisely by a sort of strange and interesting inversion that um, if we don't talk about class, there is something about the stratification and the organization of power outside the West that mm -hmm. we're not going to precisely understand? This, this is the first question I wanted to ask. And connected to this is the que is the question of um, sexuality, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, for the lack of a better word, um, mm -hmm. there is there is you know something interesting about the title. Also, that could be a, a question on its own. But um, um, and before I talk about that, I should actually say more about that. Do you try also to sort of stage or or, or try you know to sort of provoke us to think about? The fact that class exploitation is, um, you know, overlaps or is connected with sexual exploitation, right? Um, mm -hmm. Is 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 there something about you know a reflection on 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 that in your or in your film or you know do you is this going in another sort of um, direction? But I'll, I'll stop here because this is going to become too many questions. So, yeah. Um. Let's say, I mean, I, you know, me, most of the things that, I'm, that appear in the film and that I've chosen to write about are things that I've 
seen or have the habit of seeing in Morocco, right? So it's, I mean, I, it's hard for me to answer these questions because there's also personal reasons why I've chosen to write about things. Um, and these are kind of maybe the more primordial ones on some level. So for example, um, you know, my, my parents came to England in the 70s um, and they're, they're both very sort of working class. My father was from a farming family. My mother was working as a maid. She didn't finish school. And the reason that they were able to come to England was because um, an English gentleman, an English dance teacher, moved to my father's hometown, which was a seaside town not, not far from Tangier. Um, and he was a gay guy. It's, it was very popular for British uh, gay men to come to ta uh, Tangier, especially, especially at that point. Um, and he befriended a lot of boys in, in that town, one of which was my father. And I don't know the details of that relationship, um, but it's always kind of fascinated me, purely sort of personal, selfish reasons maybe, but that, you know, this is kind of, it's because of this kind of meeting that I, you know, I was born in England and my life, surely very, very different to what it would have been had that not been the case. Um, and, you know, in in those sorts of relationships, I do, yeah, I mean, I absolutely think it's, it's there's an exploitation of power going on and it's, it's, uh, it's very common to see in Morocco. Um, but again, you know, from my point of view as, as, a, as a filmmaker, I'm often beginning from sort of instinctive or emotional place where um, I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, essentially I'm trying to get close to the, 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 the characters that I'm depicting. Um, and I'm trying to, I, I want them to be credible. Um, and I want, I, I suppose I am look, I'm looking for an emotional response from, from the audience. Um, but not necessarily pity. That was, I suppose, the kind of, the, one of the things that I thought a lot about. In, in making in making this um and let's go back to your I suppose bigger question which is about class um I mean it's from from my point of view um it, you know, it was it was a big part of the, you know, I so for example, I made I made this film with non-professional actors, right? So that was um and that is like a huge effort from, from it make it complicates everything, let's say. Um not only is the the, the 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 casting is very, very difficult, um, especially given the the nature of the roles. Um, but you know, the search is very is often very time consuming and very expensive and you're always taking big risks because these these are you know quite complicated roles. It's has so there's sort of melodrama element to the film, and so they're not to find people who have never done this before, who kind of are from that milieu, who have have um, who 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 have lived on some level similar lives, who are able to do it takes a lot of effort. But that's also because. If I cho choose to do that, it's because I, you know, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with what I suppose the more conventional thing would be to do, which would be go to professional actors, of which of course are, are plenty in Morocco and who've been on TV and been in many films, and um, but it simply doesn't feel that that's the core of what their experience is, and that that again, you know, it's coming back to this idea of psychology. Um, it's often in Professional actors are often much more psychological, so they're, they're they're kind of trying to convey, trying to recreate the psychology of the character they're playing, and then convey that, and 
kind of convert that into kind of visual oral cues that they then express to the audience. Whereas when you work with a non-professional, they can kind of just be, they can exist without, they're not thinking in that way. And that was very true of the characters. And um, it's, uh, you know, in Morocco, of, of course, has a very, um, very comfortable sort of bourgeois class um, for which, for example, who wouldn't find themselves in that situation of sex, sort of sexual exploitation or this, at least um, very ambiguous, very kind of unpleasant power situation. Um, so I do think it is about class more than anything else, or at least, of course, um, it's all relative, but um, for me, yeah, I suppose that that's how I'm thinking about it, first of all. Right. Um, it's just going to ask a third question before opening to opening into the floor, and there will be, you know, it will be a comment and a and, and a question really. But, um, and you know, this is also where I'm I'm coming from. I might be intellect intellectualizing this a bit too much, but let's let's go for that. Um, um, you know, and precisely what sometimes is called post-colonial studies or decolonial studies, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, there, there is an argument which I've always found, you know, interesting um, um, about um, the very concept of, of sexuality, right? So there's been an argument. So it's, of course, you know, it has different versions. It's much more complex, but I'm going to sort of summarize it. Um, uh, basically, the argument is that the very idea that there is such a thing as sexuality, right, mm -hmm. as a universal uh, um, anthropological uh, reality, right, is, is, is misplaced, is problematic, and is, in fact, a Eurocentric, to some extent, Christian and colonial uh, assumption. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. for, in fact, the binary and the divide and the opposition between heterotes sexuality and homosexuality, right, that to some extent mm -hmm. we sort of uh, 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 assume that non-Western mm -hmm. societies and uh, and uh, and for that you know and from this point of view, a country such as Morocco would be mm -hmm. you know th that sexual practices, right, mm -hmm. the complexity of what people do feel and uh, and, um, and the way they live, right, would be reducible mm -hmm. to these sort of very binary uh, uh, identities, right, homosexuality, heterosexuality, blah blah blah, and of course this sort of uh, imposition of these categories is, is not just uh, uh, purely intellectual because it also corresponds to ways in which um, we represent, of course, uh, uh, people and also, also ways in which uh, people are also being explo exploited, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I was wondering what you thought about this argument and if it does resonate with, um, you know, the kind of uh, uh, artistic practice that you deploy, right? Yes, I mean, I think so. I suppose, and I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're getting at, but I, what what I was definitely thinking about was um, with the character of Salim was that, I mean, as I said, you know, because of my personal history, um, I was interested in this kind of meeting and representing that. And it's also something that's quite particular to Tangier. I mean, of course, it happens all over Morocco, but there is kind of certain mythology in Tangier that, of a sort of romanticization of of this place as a kind of place of site of sort of sexual liberty and um but at the same time i was aware that you know for a sort of working class teenage boy in morocco or working class men like it's not you know that idea of like um being a gay man, sort of taking that on as my identity as a kind of, didn't seem relevant. Like it's not necessarily something that, I, I don't think necessarily happens in that way in, in Morocco, among a certain class anyway. And then if you go to Casablanca, for example, and you go sort of to the Francof Francophone bourgeoisie, of course, it's very different. And you do see people, from my point of view, who would sort of resemble much more gay men in London where I'm from and you know my I'm a gay man and my 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 gay male friends and they kind of have adopted that social role that is kind of a 
and it maybe you could say it was a performance on some level. Um, but among working class men, it's just it it just, just seems less of a an option to to adopt that. There there's necessarily the space or even the desire or you know even if they do have sex with other men, it's kind of practices different on some level. And so all that to say was that for, with the character of Slim, I was, was interested in kind of complicating it and kind of not, not, not being so explicit and, um, and maybe sort of rep having a sense of that desire, but not, again, not necessarily sort of creating this, what to me would be like a sort of false catharsis of like having a coming out or a kind of coming to terms or you know a revindication of of that desire it just it just feels it didn't feel honest to me um i don't know if that's clear yeah 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 absolutely thank you very much mm -hmm. Faisal. um yeah there are questions many questions two questions at least right here one question here one question there Yes, please. Thank you so much for such a beautiful film. No, yeah, I have to sort of say it again. Yeah, yeah. And I very much appreciate the visualization of the mother and son body together. And that I found really compelling the camera work and the um, gentleness of that. But we are in the presence of a reluctant. Um, mama's boy, and I just wonder, I was taken back a little bit by the ending when the fight was like to be done, um, and I just wanted to hear more about how that ending developed, but also if you could say something about that mother-son relationship and the love that mama boy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You said the reluctant mama boy, right? Yeah. Okay. Not sure I'm going to be able to say everything, but I will um, uh, try. Um, yeah, there is a question. So first, the person thanks you for, for doing such a, a, a wonderful movie. Um, uh, there is... So the... The person is sort of was taken aback about the the end, so she would like you to, uh, or they would like you to elaborate on the um, on the um, on this you know on this ending, and she uses uh, they uses the, the this expression called, I mean that so to speak, Selim is a sort of reluctant mama boy, right? And so, um, mm -hmm. how could you elaborate more about this uh, mother son relationship and you know its complexities, ambiguities, and so on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so again, I mean, this this kind of I was inspired by a relationship that I witnessed in my family, um, and it was uh, a, an auntie who who had a child out, outside of wedlock, which was quite complicated. Um, but the father was was around, kind of. And so the family tolerated it um, to some degree. And then he died of cancer and it all happened very quickly. And so she was left with a kind of illegitimate son and, it, you know, things became more complicated for her. But he he, he basically started working um, from age seven, I think. Um, and he became, he was working in a mechanics garage and he became sort of very macho. He was like 10 or 11 and he was kind of this little guy, very sort of tough and um, and he had that we were in the in the family, we kind of witnessed a strange, a slightly weird dynamic emerge um, where he, he was kind of taking the place of the father and she and the, my auntie was kind of almost encouraging it because she was very lonely there was something kind of very Oedipal and very odd but I, I found it very moving because they were both it, it was kind of very violent and very tender and they would do things to kind of punish each other out of jealousy and 
Um, and yeah, and this was a kind of starting point, um, another starting point for the film that I had when I when I began to write, and I was kind of interested in that, um, in that dynamic, and that um, it was it felt on some level maybe, and that they were kind of. the violence of the world around them was kind of being displaced onto one another. They were somehow, whatever the violence that they were kind of expressing towards each other was somehow a reflection of the, of their environment. And I, I found that interesting. Um, so that's kind of how it developed. And I think, of, of course, I, um, as I began to write, I started to project maybe more of myself into it, more of my own mother, um, but that was a starting point. Um, and in terms of the ending, um, I suppose for me, it was really, it was, um, he, I mean, he, he decides to leave and that's the, um, and that felt like the most interesting point to end the film, I suppose. It was, it didn't necessarily feel like he wanted to go further than that with, with them, but the, the idea that he just decides to leave her and we don't necessarily know if it's going to be forever or for a long time, but just, just. Um, just to see him make that decision, given how sort of yeah he is he is very much a, a mama's boy, <laughs> um, and how dependent he is on her, I thought would be a um, powerful ending. And then you know we actually shot more material, so it continued, but it just felt actually as soon as they separate, um, it it was nice that the film ended there. And then in terms of how it actually happens with this sort of wedding in front of a prison and this sort of coincidence. Um, that was me sort of, I suppose, imposing some, like I was watching a lot of melodramas and I was watching a lot of Italian, Italian neorealism when I was sort of conceiving of the film and it felt, I suppose it was just a desire for a sort of cinematographic gesture of something sort of quite melodramatic with sort of movement and a sort of certain emotion in it. Thank you, Faisal. We're going to have one more question, right? So up here. Yes. Uh, thank you for the film. Um, I noticed in the, um, the scene that uh, Fatima Zara is kind of at her lowest, um, selling the TV and selling her items on the street. Um, there's a, a character sitting on the fence um, who's the darkest character that we see in the entire film. Um, and I'm wondering about um, what's the function of that character um, in the film, um, particularly if we're thinking about the film in terms of uh, what we said earlier about trying to think about the film in terms of primarily class, um, but what's lost when we do think about it in that way, when that is the, the kind of the, the, the point that confirms that she's kind of been dispossessed, um, and there's kind of a sort of, sort of, kind of matter of factness to the black, to the um, darker skinned character um, being there. Um, who's lost without narrative. So I'm, I'm wondering about the function of that character um, in relation to the film. Okay, thank you. Um, am I going to be able to say that? Um, so there is a scene, in fact, where mm -hmm. uh, Fatima Zahra is at, the, um, at her lowest, I think you said that. Um, and in fact, at, uh, uh, it seems that there is in fact a, a character at this moment in the film um, uh, who's sitting on on, a f on, a, on the fence, right? I don't know if, if you recall the, the, the scene. Um, and the question is, so there are a few questions, in fact. What is the function of this character in the, feel, in the film? How does it say, what does it say uh, um, about precisely the, the, you know, the way in which we can think about this film in terms of, of class, right, as you suggested? And, um, and also um, precisely um, connected to that question, uh, um, how does the fact of, of, of thinking about this film in terms of class, what, I mean, what, what else does it um, 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 make impossible precisely in terms of, I mean, how would you, you know, think about it otherwise, not just in terms of class, I guess this is, uh, maybe I didn't understand exactly what, 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 was, what the question was. Um, I'm sorry if something, something was missed or added in the translation, but that's, a, that's what I understood. Um, 
I didn't get the the first part of the question. So there's a character sitting on the fence. He's a, da a dark skinned character sitting on the fence. Ah, okay, okay, okay. It's um, it's uh, um, an African guy, sub-Saharan African guy, who's also selling stuff in the street, right? Is it that? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, that is um. Uh, a real a real part of Tangier where um there are a lot of sub Saharan sub sub Saharan immigrants um who sell in that part. So he he's a guy from the real location. Um, so it wasn't intended as a kind of to make a particular point. Um, which I guess I, it sounds very easy, but as a filmmaker, often like you're dealing with you're letting reality in and so that that was not I wouldn't say that was um intended as a key to understanding the film um and the second part of the question I didn't understand either so it was how, how it was about class right do you want to yeah maybe mm -hmm. Do you mind? Do you mind just going to tell the, the last part of what you said, just you know, in terms of race and class, just to make it more simple, if that's fine for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so basically, the question is that if you if you put away, if you put aside the question of race by emphasizing, you know, class, you know, basically the question is, you know, don't you think that we're losing something, right? Uh, uh, by sort of of the sort of emphasis on class that you're you were mentioning in, in in fact your interview is race lost right um is is race lost i don't i mean i don't think so i mean i if, uh, when when we watch a film we're kind of we're not we're not thinking in such binaries surely it's not you know you don't one continues to continues to the exist continues to exist while you're thinking about the other thing I mean one thing I will say about the Guardian interview I think what's important is it's is the kind of con there's a British context as well that that's slightly related to because some the, that conversation is somehow of course um it is about this film um but it's also to do with how films You know, the, the, that that conversation was kind of very much about me coming back to because I was living in Paris and I was coming back to the UK and um, sort of what I was thinking about the 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 not only the film scene in the UK, but the sort of political sort of our politics is going. And I do think that, um, you know, I. I am, I suppose very aware of ways in which sort of you know certain discussion of material conditions is 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 can be difficult and can be harder um and again i don't think that it's an either or situation but i do think um i'm i'm wary of 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 the opposite i suppose of you know, if everything is was to be explained by race, then how? I don't think we could understand the characters either, if you see what I mean, because they're 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 so they're they're it's it's to me it's about how they are kind of reflections of their environment and vice versa, which means they their material conditions, which and in um. 
in in a country like Morocco, I I, I do think it is uh it's as much about that as anything else. Okay. Thank you very much, Faisal. That was the that was the end, I guess. Um, thank you for joining us um, on um, on Zoom, and mm -hmm. I imagine it's quite late, right, uh, out there. It's two, it's ten past two. So thank you, thank you very much, thank you very um, much. Um, again, and um, yes, see you sometime soon, and uh, good luck for the the other films. We hope, right? Thank you very Take much. Care. Thank bye you. Bye. Good evening. Thank you.